All right, this is Jeff Klima. I'm here for New Media Rockstars. I'm with Stian Hafstad, and he's the director of the new comic web series STD Oddsfjord. Is that correct? Uh, Oddfjord, yeah, it's good. Oddfjord. Okay, Oddfjord. No, no S. Yeah, Oddfjord. So, mm. okay. Now, the series shoots on uh, location in Norway, correct? Yeah. Okay. So, can you give us a, just a, a quick synopsis of STD uh, Oddfjord uh, for the NMR readers who maybe don't know about you? Mm. Well, basically, it's about this uh, New York City cop who, you know, he's tired of the violence and, you know, the stressful New York City life. So he wants to get transferred to someplace calm. Um, uh, the NYPD has recently started a foreign exchange program with the Norwegian state, so he gets offered to be sent to this small, small Norwegian town called Oddfjord, and he thinks this is going to be heaven on earth, but as it turns out, in this small town, everyone's a criminal, everything ends in a shootout, and, you know, it's not as peaceful as he thought it would be. Nice. That's a good, that's a good, uh, good intro there. Now, how did, the, uh, how did the idea for the show come about? Well, basically, I'm from a small town myself, um, and, you know, we have all these, like, CSI shows, you know, with New York and Miami and Las Vegas, and I've always been thinking how funny it would be if you set one of those shows to, like, a small town, you know, instead of, like, a big, big city. But then we quickly found out that, you know, it's not, not fun if nothing happens in a small town, so we decided to have a small town where basically everything happens, and it's way over the top, and try to make satire out of that. Nice. Now you guys seem to have a, a, a pretty good sized budget for the show. It seems. I mean, you got a lot of locations. Obviously, I mean, you're doing the, the gunfire and stuff with post production, but I mean, just the, the props and everything you've got going. So, does the government help out in any way, or is it? I mean, all privately funded, or what? Uh, well, actually, one third of it is privately funded. The rest is different, uh, different like film funds, and uh, it's like local, uh, yeah, a, a local film fund, and then a national film fund. Because basically, on paper, it's a television pilot or a, a development project for a television show, and they have like funding. Uh, there are funding possibilities in Norway to get that funded. So we applied for that, and we got it. But yeah, mostly the reason why it looks good is because we've all lived in that city for many, many, many years where we shot. So we know all like where we can get our way. We can get a train, you know, a train station that looks good, and where we can get all those small things that add up and give it more production value. Now, you guys, do you film in English to maximize your global audience, or what was the choice behind that? Basically, me and my friend, who's like co-writer and co-director, we have this YouTube channel that we have quite a bit of a following now. I think we have 200,000 subscribers, and they're from all over the world. I think about only like 5% of them are Norwegian. So when we got the opportunity to do a, a real web series, we wanted it to be in English, so that we could bring our fans, you know, along on that ride. Um, and then we tried to come up with a concept where it was logical that it was in English, even though it was set in Norway. And so that's how it, it all uh, turned out to be in English. Now, uh, how did you guys find Dave Koenig, who plays the, uh, the American detective in your series? How did you guys come across that guy? Uh, yeah, Dave is, is so brilliant. I go to uh, Columbia University here in New York. And I did a project for my directing actors class, and I had this, this part, and my professor, she said, I have this guy for you, he's brilliant, he has great comedic timing, he'll be perfect. And so I used Dave there, and that was one and a half years ago, and he's been in the back of my head ever since. And so now when we got this opportunity to do this web series, I sent him an email, like, do you want to do it? We're going to shoot, fly over to Norway and shoot it there. And he was like, yeah, yeah, I'm down. So basically we wrote the whole series for him. Uh, oh, okay. So, okay. Now, now, yeah. You said you went to to Columbia. How does how does a guy from Norway end up going to Columbia University? Uh, that is, yeah. Well, it was a, a funny story. I remember I was sitting in my living room watching TV one day, and I was feeling like as before, I've done like sitting here doing this, being in this town. I've done this for such a long time. I got to try something different, and so I thought about. Uh, applying for film school, so I looked up a bunch of different schools. I found that Columbia fit my profile uh, the most, so I applied. I was lucky enough to get a scholarship, and so now I'm here. Nice. Now, you're part of the uh, the comedy duo, I guess, uh, Pistol Shrimps. Mm -hmm. How did that come about? 
uh, it's kind of funny. We, were, uh, we both went to the same undergrad back home in Norway. I was one year above him. And so we were standing at a party uh, once. And I told him, you know, I always had, I always wanted so much to edit myself into the Harry Potter films. And he said, well, so do I. And I actually have costumes. I was like, no way. And so we just decided, let's do it. And then I think we spent six months making the first one. And ever since, we just made more videos. Now, you guys do a lot of yeah, splicing yourselves into the action of you know, mainstream Hollywood films. Have you guys heard from the, the, the film studios or anything in regards to that or the legality uh, of it? Well, we had one video that got pulled uh, from, from the internet um, because of that. But uh, in more positive terms, we had uh, this one this spring called Titanic Super 3D, where we made a Titanic spoof. And then we got an email from the people who, made, who were making the behind the scenes and stuff for the DVD release or the Blu-ray release. They wanted to use segments of, uh, of that video for a documentary on the Blu-ray release. So that was super fun. No, that's really a, a pretty neat distinction there, yeah. So the, now the video that got pulled, that was uh, Brokeback Hogwarts it was called, I think? Okay, maybe I have two videos that got pulled. Oh, okay, there was another one, huh? <laughs> So. Uh, no, the Brokeback Hogwarts got pulled by YouTube, uh, basically because it was too, like, the sex in it was too, like, we went too far with the, with the sex in it. We had another one that got pulled, it was a Pirates of the Caribbean spoof. Uh, we're not sure if YouTube pulled it or if it was, you know, the, the copyright holders, but basically we were told that it was false advertising, because could, people could interpret it as a real Pirates film, and it's not, and so uh, we got, like, a warning, and and stuff so we didn't put it back up now you guys have a you have a, a a pretty filthy good sense of humor which i dig completely uh is that i mean does that come from your parents or where do you, where does that uh, filthy humor come from i don't know it's hard to say you know i uh for me i've always had this like philosophy that um there are some things that are just like they're funny to everyone you know like poop jokes and fart jokes and sex jokes they're just like they're in our genetics to be funny, and then if you can can combine that with uh, intelligent humor or something that's more intellectual, uh, then you will create the best kind of humor. And that's why I'm like a huge fan of South Park and those kind of shows who manage to combine uh, combine that stuff. But yeah, I, I'm not sure where it comes from really now. Okay, do you have any comedic influences? Uh, say American comedic influences that you uh, kind of would cite. Oh yes, South Park. Uh, I I watched South Park since since it started when I was young, you know. And I kind of grew up with the show as the show got more mature. Like the first seasons, it, it was all about poop jokes and fart jokes. That was when I like almost hit puberty. So I grew up with that show, and as it got you know smarter, I grew up and and uh, basically that whole humor I find it very. Uh, I just find it very inspiring, that mix of so-called uh, uh, very childish humor and so-called intelligent satire and, uh, uh, and, yeah, and, uh, and parody. Nice. Now, why did you guys choose the name Pistol Shrimps itself? Well, basically, we needed something that was logo-friendly and catchy. Um, so we went on Google and we searched for uh, funny animal names. And we made this long list, and then we uh, went back and forth, and we could only agree on Pistol Shrimps. was the one that we both liked, so then that became our thing. And uh, yeah, So basically, logo-friendly was, uh, was the most important thing. Oh, I get you. Okay. Now, there's, a, there's an amateur sports team in London, and also a band that are both called Pistol Shrimps. Have you guys heard from them? or? No, we haven't heard anything at all about that. Um, the only thing, there's a video on YouTube of the, the species, pistol shrimps, and how they shoot with the air bubbles. Mm. And we get sent that one all the time. I'm like, oh, have you seen this? This is the real pistol shrimps. But uh, no, we haven't heard about the band or the sports team now. Oh, okay. Now, I love, I love your web characters, uh, Mark and Bill. Is it true that they are uh, having all of the sex all of the time? That is so true. <laughs> Why would they lie about that? I don't know. <laughs> of course not. Now, are they based on anyone in particular, or are they completely original? Where, where are we going with that? I think they're uh, based on ourselves as, like, our most awkward sides as teenagers, you know? 
you you try and think back think back about like what was your most <laughs> like awkward sides, and then you just try to elevate those sides and just make them into a character. Uh, so yeah, it's sort of based on ourselves. We were kind of nerdy when we were young. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Now is uh, Oddfjord uh, is it full time for you now, or will there still be pistol shrimp videos coming out? Uh, there still will be Pistol Shrimp videos coming out. Uh, hopefully we can shoot more in January, and we have two or three more that we haven't edited yet. But for the next two months, it's going to be odd for... Because um, it, it comes out on uh, bt.no, and then it comes out on YouTube one week later. Okay. And that's uh, that that's what, the, the 25th of October, I think it comes out on YouTube? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Now, uh, guns are a pretty prevalent image in your videos. Uh do you, does Norway have like a is it a thriving gun culture or is that kind of an American influence there? <laughs> it's very much an American influence. Uh, gun culture is not big in Norway at all. It's for hunting and that's that's about it. Um, the gun laws are sort of strict, at least compared to, um, to to America. But yeah, it's just all influenced, you know, by American action films and how, like, you know, shoot first, ask later, that kind of, you know, Stallone, Schwarzenegger stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, what are some other YouTube channels that you follow, personally? Uh, let's see, I really love the epic rap battles of history. They're absolutely brilliant. They're so funny. Um, One Minute Physics is just, because you learn so much and it's entertaining. Uh, Chasm G is super funny. Uh, what else? I was a huge fan of Barats and Beretta, but they don't upload much anymore. Uh, but yeah, I think that's that. That's my favorite ones. Yeah. Oh, okay. Now you've directed several short films, actually. Now are those available <laughs> online? Uh, yeah, they are. Uh, um, different places. So I can send you some links if you guys want. Oh yeah. Okay. No, it was just that was interesting, and uh, some of them looked interesting. Particularly, <laughs> what was it? Short penis. Uh, small yes, penis. penis. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's about a support group for men who have small penises. It's like the setting of the story. Uh, uh, so yeah, that was an interesting, interesting film to make. You know, when you're trying to cast a group of men to have small penises on film. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, I kind of like no, no, I don't want to be in that. Uh, so that was <laughs> that was a challenge. I can imagine. Now, uh, finally, will uh, Epic Horse from your recent horse video be appearing in Oddfjord? No, unfortunately not. You know, it ran away. So if you can hold that, you know, it's too epic. <laughs> yeah. Well, Stian, thank you very much for your time, and uh, we look forward to seeing the show. I got to see the pilot episode. I think it's hilarious, and I'm excited for more. So uh, we'll be in touch, and uh, thank you very much for doing this. Thank you. All right. Have a good one. You too.